Well, I, I, um, it, it's not just the general public who, who don't really understand it. Um, the scientists who have produced it have absolutely no idea of the mathematics of the waveform that it's going to produce or that it is producing. Um, we know that it is in the, generally it's in the gigahertz range. Now I'll explain that. <clears throat> but um, what it's, what it's, uh, the, the problems are, is that first there are, like, the, like its predecessors, there are no safety checks at all carried out on 5G. There are no safety tests at all carried out on anything to do with 5G. It is known that the gigahertz range, in other words, the waveform, the, the waves that come out, it is known that they are in the same frequency as some of our cellular processes in our bodies, some of our cells. It is known they can interfere with the cellular processes of the body. Um, <clears throat> there are several different waveforms for 5G. It isn't just one wave. Already, I do know that 40 leading groups or 40 leading groups of scientists um, in 40 countries, uh, leading scientists in 40 countries have warned that the waveforms from 5G uh, can be particularly harmful, not just to humans, but to all living species. And I can tell you as a military man that one of the top waveforms for 5G <laughs> is incredibly close. And in terms of electronic waveforms, there really isn't much difference from the new microwave weapon called active denial that is now in use for crowd control to subdue and bring bring down crowds and that is known or reputed uh, to cause visual disturbances certainly neurological disturbances um, heart disturbances all, all sorts of things now that is the, the, the new active denial, which can be also released from aircraft or beamed from aircraft. Uh, that is incredibly close to one of the frequencies on 5G. And as I said, there are no, the waveform is so mathematically complex that nobody can really tell you how it's going to react other than it makes a damn good weapon. Uh, and we are now producing this and handing it to toddlers. And you said to me, or, or, I'll never forget it, you said, Richie, as it stands, you said, low-level wireless radio frequency, that's low-level wireless radio frequency. This is back now, six, seven years ago. Um, when we're exposed to that, it can disrupt cell metabolism, it can reduce melatonin, um, which of course controls your sleeping and your waking cycles, and, and your immune system. And your immune and, system. And, and your immune system, yeah. yeah. And you said it'll, it'll disrupt brain glucose metabolism and it'll mess around with the blood-brain barrier. That was low-level wireless radio frequency. And you were oh, proven yeah, to be yeah. right. So this is something different entirely, Barry, for the lay person. What's it like? Is it like turning 4G up to, you know, from, from, from 7 up to 1,000 on the, on, on the dial on the radio? What is it? Um, <clears throat> I suppose you, 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 you the, the simple answer, of course, is yes and no. Um, each each particular frequency uh, can affect diff different parts of the body. You you have um, in an adult body, you have around four and a half thousand biological structures, and. Uh, Every part of your body, every single part of your body is in communication with every other part. Every single cell in your body produces its own electric and magnetic field. <clears throat> um, and they all, it's like a constant chatter that goes on in your body all the time. But they all have their own different resonant cyclotronic and circadian frequencies. Now, 
when I was talking to spies and, and studying this in, during the Cold War, um, it, it was realized that different frequencies could cause different things to happen in the body. There's a frequency that can cause the bowel to collapse, the eyes to go funny, the heart to collapse, and so on. Uh, and there are four and a half thousand different structures in the body that can be known to be affected. So as you run through the, the 2G, 3G, 4G, then you can affect different ones. The, when, when I was talking to spies, uh, and my list, the list that I made, uh, I suppose I had a list, an active list of uh, networks then that, that used uh, between 40 and 60 different frequencies that could cause uh, up to around 100 neurological and physiological conditions. The latest list that I have, I've seen one of 600. The latest list I've seen or heard of is now 750 uh, different frequencies that can cause neurological, physiological harm. But it isn't 750 where you get this one or this one or this one. Um, mathematically, it is 750 factorial, which means you can get the effects of one multiplied by two, multiplied by three, up to 750. Now, 5G is, is going to encompass a lot of what all of the other Gs have and introduce its own as well. And this is why the top scientists in 40 countries have actually signed a petition saying, you know, you, you cannot do this. Uh, but like every all of the other Gs, um, the industry and the government scientists are choosing to ignore the entire scientific body throughout the world uh, and just <clears throat> plod on regardless because um, they are actually above the law. You know, they can buy the law. The industry, I had a, a symposium here not too many months ago with there were 11 professors and research doctors here uh, for four days <coughs> discussing all of this and turning it into a DVD. Um, and they were just absolutely horrified that nobody is being listened to and the producer of this, he said, well, I've researched this industry and it is now estimated at $17 trillion. $17 trillion. Uh, $17 trillion. And when you have that much money, uh, you know, you can buy governments, you can buy countries, uh, and it's not, it's not difficult to buy scientists. It really isn't. Uh, that will do an experiment which is legitimate but not accurate and it will cause confusion. And this is what they're doing and they're going to get away with it um, because they are above the law. Can I ask and you this, Barry? So, so, let, let me ask you this. Will we, again, going back to when we first began talking, we talked about the effects of um, radiation on the smallest creatures in the world. Well, not the smallest creatures, but, you know, the smallest creatures that we come into contact with every day. Birds, of course, and bees and, and insects. Yeah. Are we going to see, you know, because we talked about how back in the early 2000s, we saw incidences of birds falling out of the sky, birds abandoning, abandoning their nests, all sorts of issues that we saw back then. Are these issues, are we going to see more of this in the next two to well, three to four get, years. Yes, it's, it's, it's going to get worse. Um, it, in my paper, which I wrote uh, th three years ago now, <clears throat> um, uh, Why Fire Thalidomide in the Making, um, I predicted for the human race that, and, and David Icke picked this up and published it, um, I predicted, well, I didn't predict, I proved uh, using government figures, World Health Organization figures, secret figures, I proved that in just three generations, 60 years of human life, only 
Of the exposed populations, only one in eight children after three generations could be born healthy. Now, that has been, people picked that up and ran with experiments, which I'm very pleased of. And it, I, oddly enough, I read just a few days ago um, that experiments show that entire species of animals, entire species can be extinct in five generations. Now, that would match my prediction because if you've got only one in eight, uh, roughly after three, you, you then don't have enough population of anything to sustain uh, a, a workable population. So it, it's been published, I read it just a few days ago, that they are now showing that after five generations for some animals, they could become extinct, except, and this is interesting, except bacteria and viruses. They seem to proliferate and grow and become more deadly in microwaves. So while it's and destroying... While it's, while it's destroying um, the biological makeup of <laughs> creatures, of, of, of mammals, of, of yeah. you know, marsupials, of human beings, it actually increases the potency of viruses and some bacteria. That's extraordinary. Oh, yeah. It, and it, it was because this came up in our conversation. Yeah. And I can tell you, he wouldn't mind me. He's published it. Um, it, it was Professor Moskala. Uh, who is the senior professor of Vienna University. Um, I mentioned this, and he said, oh, yes, and he, and he came out with, with the, pr the proteins on, on the bacterium and that. Um, but it, it's known, and it is published, that bacterium, when they're exposed to microwaves, they um, can reproduce so rapidly that they have a defensive mechanism. Well, of course, they are the oldest living beings on the planet. They've, they've developed a defensive mechanism and they reproduce more rapidly and they become um, immune to antibiotics. They, they sort of turn into sort of a super bacterium. There's a couple of quotes I want to I, I wanna just read out here from um, learned men and women. This is Olga Sheehan. She's a former employee of the World Health Organization and she wrote a book called No Safe Place. Uh, you might be aware of Olga, Barry. Olga oh, says, yeah. you know yeah, Olga, yeah. Olga says, the plans to beam highly penetrative 5G millowave radiation at us from space must surely be one of the greatest follies ever conceived of by mankind. There will be nowhere safe to live. And as well as not hearing Barry Trower on BBC television or radio, we don't hear people like Olga Sheehan. That's, you know, everybody in the world should hear that, whether they want to dismiss it out of hand or whether they want to investigate it. The greatest follies ever conceived of by mankind, there will be nowhere safe to live, Barry. With, with these microwaves, and it is known um, there are 20, 30,000 research papers. With microwaves, we do know that every living thing on the planet, except bacterium and virus, every living thing, trees, everything, plants, every single thing, birds, fish, um, everything is affected by microwaves. Now, with, with us, when they're beaming these down from satellites, <coughs> um, you have nowhere to go no you have absolutely nowhere to go but you do have a choice uh, at the moment not to be vaccinated you have a choice not to eat certain foods you you there is a, a little choice that you can have um, it may be living away from the general population which some people would quite like but you, you have a choice not to do those there is no choice with microwaves 